Hey, kia ora everyone. Hey, uh, looking back over my stuff, I found my first horror, or my first attempt at horror anyway. It's done differently than the rest. So, um, please, if you, if you could take a squiz or a squiz again, and if you could let me know what you think about how I told this psycho story. <laughs> cool, and I'll see you guys at the end. Now, let's begin. This this is Dennis. Dennis is five years old. He is the imaginary friend, actually he's the best friend, of another little boy who's five years old, and his name is called Dennis Two. We'll call him Dennis Two. Now Dennis, well Dennis was more than just a best friend for old Dennis Two. Dennis was a hero, kind of like a superhero. Because you see, every time that Dennis Two's old man would get drunk and beat the shit out of his mum, and then have some anger left over and would beat up Dennis Two, well, Dennis used to step in and he used to shield Dennis Two from the beating his father used to give him. And he would keep Dennis Two safe. And that, well, that to Dennis Two, that was a real hero. Now, Dennis Two and Dennis would grow up being best friends in a place called Virginia. And that, that's in the US of A. Now, these boys, these boys both grew up in a real bad fam in a really, really small house. But they didn't worry about that because they used to play together in this huge house with heaps of room. Actually, their favorite room was the room with the big fire. It was always warm and cozy. The two of them, they'd play in there for hours. The thing is, they'd always meet up there, especially when Dennis Two's father used to bash him. Now, when the boys were 10, a little door opened and suddenly appeared another little boy. We'll call him boy number three because you see he didn't have a name and Dennis and Dennis too thought that was rather funny so one and two asked three why would we want to play with you and little boy three said well three times the fun is much better than two so now all three of them became the best of friends and they all grew up together playing and having lots of fun now it wasn't much long later that Dennis too could see the change in Dennis. It was faint at first, but then rather obvious. You see, Dennis, he started getting really angry and started to think about doing really bad things. And Dennis too knew that it wasn't Dennis, it was Boy 3 whispering in his ear. Boy 3 would whisper horrible things and make Dennis really angry. But Dennis too, he didn't like what Dennis was doing, but he didn't want to make Dennis angry because he didn't want Dennis to go away because he thought that if Dennis went away, then he'd be stuck there with boy three and Dennis was his hero. So those three little boys, they would just grow up. And then it happened. One day, just a flash, a flash of a memory. And Dennis too could see through Dennis's eyes and he saw someone being butchered. And Dennis too, well, he was shocked but not shocked because of what Dennis had done, but because Dennis and that boy had done it behind his back. And that made Dennis too very sad. So the boys grew up together. And by this time, Dennis too, well, he had a name for boy three, but he never said it to his face because he was scared of boy three. So anyways, the three of them grew up and as they did, more and more of those flashes would enter Dennis two's mind. And Dennis knew he had to do something to stop boy three from making Dennis so angry. So he came up with a plan, a very cunning plan. He was going to trick boy three into his favorite room, into the room with a fireplace. And then... When he got him in there, he was going to get Boy 3 to climb into the fire. And that is exactly what he did. And just as Boy 3 hopped in, Dennis quickly hit the fire guard and the fire shutter came down and trapped Boy 3 in the fire behind the grate. And Dennis 2 was so happy that he had trapped Boy 3. So Dennis 2 went and found Dennis and told him what he had done. And D2 pleaded with Dennis to not let Boy 3 out. And Dennis said, I won't, on one condition, that you never mention Boy 3 to anyone or I will set him free. And Dennis 2 looked back and said, I won't, I won't, because he wouldn't. He didn't want Boy 3 to get out because he knew how angry Boy 3 would be with him. So now that that was settled, both boys, both Dennis's, they grew up and grew old. And now, well, now the date's 2018. And what's so significant about this date? Well, this is the date that 
another person into our story and that that would be a policeman and this policeman he was looking into a murder that happened back in 1980 and that murder there was some dna some dna left by dennis too so in 2019 that police officer he ran that through familiar genealogy and they found dennis too so the coppers, well, they go get Dennis too, and they bring him down to the police station. And our policeman, well, he goes and sees Dennis too, except it wasn't Dennis too he was speaking to. No, when he got there, it was Dennis. And how do we know that? Well, this is what happened. And told that he was being charged with the homicide. And Dennis Bowman said, you're pulling it out of your ass. So that didn't go too well for the cops. So the cops leave. And the boys... Well, those boys, well, they started talking. And Dennis too, well, he managed to calm Dennis down. Because you see, Dennis too knew that now that crime, that could be looked at capital murder, which means that they could get capital punishment, which means that Dennis could get killed. And Dennis too didn't want that to happen. And Dennis too said, let me save you, Dennis. Let me save you. For the first time, Dennis too would be the hero of the story. Dennis too would save Dennis. And Dennis agreed. So Dennis too, well, he asked those jail dudes to call back the cop. Hey, so the policeman comes back. And now in this little horror story of ours, this so, is where it. we are. Uh, one of the head honchos down there at the jail said you wanted to talk to me. Yes, sir, I do. Why don't we make this thing real easy, okay? okay. Easy for you, easy for me. Okay. Is there any way we can get the capital knocked off. Well, now this is what I'm, I'm suggesting. I will forego the lawyer. I will tell you everything that I have remembered from that night. And I will go before the judge and plead guilty of my own volition. Do you think we could do that? Now, I can't answer that question without having the prosecutor present right. and without having your attorney present. Now, you're going well, to be... what if I don't have an attorney? What if I don't I choose if I have to have one? So... More or less turn myself in. So, if I understand you correctly, Dennis, you, you want to just do something along the lines of going to court Monday saying... I did it. And now in this story, it comes to the time of when in the story it all starts to rhyme. And Dennis too is about to say what those flashes showed him on that horrible day. All that he can remember through those flashes in his mind. Those flashes not too serious, then again not kind. I'm 600 miles away mm. from anybody I know. Mm -hmm. I'm wound up like an eight-day clock. I said, okay, i got to get off this ship. Right. And I walked into a little bar. Well, I got stupid drunk. Mm -hmm. I mean, just crazy stupid drunk. I right. sat there for about, I'll bet, three hours. Mm -hmm. Didn't know how I was going to get back to base. Mm -hmm. I couldn't afford a, couldn't afford a cab or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's night. And walking down the street, and I walked past this house, and I said, I wonder if they got some money ring around. And I went up to the window, got out a pocket knife, but we got it open, opened up the window. I almost fell in the house. I was drunk. I mean, I was just drunk. And I looked in the top drawers, because everybody got a junk drawer. Right. There was another door, and opened it up, and she was lying there. She sat up and started to scream. I still had that little pen knife in my hand. Right. And when I went to push her back down, she grabbed that hand. I, I can vivid, I can see it, it right in my mind, that knife going right there. I blanked out right there. And I said, lady, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And I walked out the front door. Now, in this little story, with D2 in his cell, this cop wanted more of the story, more of what Dennis Two could tell. So the cop gives Dennis Two a book and a little pen, and asks old man Dennis Two to draw what happened back then. 
What if we start out just by drawing inside the house? Let's just start out with that. She was right there, as soon as I opened the door. Right there is where everything is. So in this little story, Dennis too is about to say who was in the room that night on that fateful day. He's about to tell this cop about boy number three, a tale he swore he'd never tell unless Dennis would set him free. Yes, Dennis. Mm -hmm. And the demon used to be right out here in front, right? It had a little pointy beard, it horns, mm. it claws. The demon. The demon. But now, the demon's in here. And it still tries to get out, but I won't let it. Now, in this little story, I forgot to say that those flashes that would happen, those memories seen by two, those flashes weren't from Dennis that two could see, those flashes were from a demon, and that would be boy number three. You see that three could see that two loved one, and would forgive him even for murder, as long as two couldn't see exactly what happened, that two would take it no further. And all that time through those years when three was tricking two, two had no idea at all unlike me and you that's the thing dennis we have to get i don't see it i i'm looking all right i'm looking or are you denying that you no i'm not no i'm not denying i'm just looking and i can see her you can see her i can the see her stomach okay when i put the knife all right so she right. obviously didn't have any clothes on no she had clothes on well, she must not have had clothes on here well, if you could see her stomach. I don't know. Maybe you're... I don't know. She... I know she was wearing a nightgown. Okay. And that's when I blanked out. I remember when I left. All right, let's, let's stop I for a second. I don't remember. And in this story, you will see when Dennis too figures it out and that he has been tricked all this time. And now we see him figure it out in this story of mine. Oh, and make sure you subscribe. Give me a couple minutes, Dennis. You see, it's about now within this story that old man Dennis too here started to worry because in his head Dennis did knew and had now figured out what I had told you. Dennis too's worry would start to make him weep, not so much for the betrayal, but in the promise he was meant to keep. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna leave it as it is, okay? We're gonna leave it as it is. And, um, you know, if, uh, if you honestly, legitimately cannot remember it, then, then, then... I didn't do that. Okay. Okay. Are you okay, Dennis? No. No, I'm not. I didn't do this. <laughs> You ready to go back? Yeah. All right. You okay? No. So the copper, he took Dennis too back to the jail, which almost brings us to the end of this little tall tale. And once he was back, Dennis too hit the track and he ran all the way back to the rickety old house and screamed Dennis's name, screamed from his mouth. He checked all of the rooms, even the ones with the fire, but Dennis too knew that one, knew that two was a liar. Dennis too, that little boy, cried and rolled up in a ball and slipped into sleep alone, far away from it all. And then it happened. Happened, you ask? Yes, that searing, welting pain. It had been so long since he too had felt it, but it was the same. And Dennis woke up from his sleep and gave such a yelp. And there he saw his father standing there with his favorite belt. And beside him, in the darkness, Dennis too could see. 
the outline of a furious boy number three. If uh, you are still here, uh, who? Uh, you. <laughs> you watching this. If you're still here, can you do me a favor? Can you uh, tell me if you think that uh, this attempt was all right uh, with you? Because if you're still here, then it must have been somewhat okay. Unless you're one of those people that, you know, fuck, I've watched so much now, I might as well just stay to the end. And no matter how bad it gets, it just fucking... It's horrific. Yeah. Unless you're one of them. But otherwise, otherwise, could you let me know down below in the comments? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go keep it. Go you do it. Stay safe and I'll see you guys next episode. I like the story. Well, actually, if you want to see the real full story done by professionals, <laughs> then head over to that little channel called A and E. And uh, make sure you subscribe to them <laughs> if you haven't already. Those dudes always get cool stuff. Anyway, I'll put a link below. Okay, Kakite, this time for sure. Kakite. <laughs>